Hi Spring fans, welcome to another super uh, quick mid-season mid interregnum uh, uh, installment of Spring Tips wherein I want to talk about something that is super, super preliminary. I wouldn't recommend it for production, but I think all, all the same, very interesting. Uh, it is a uh, third-party community project called Jasync, which now has like super, super preliminary support for MySQL. Now, again, would I go to production with this tomorrow? Probably not. but. Um, uh, it'll get there eventually, right? R2DBC, of course, is the uh, Reactive Relational Database Connectivity API. It's an SPI that provides the reactive primitives uh, for working with a SQL data store. And I did a whole video on this, a whole hour-long thing, introducing, um, you know, every different, the sort of tiered ways to use R2DBC and what it does and all that stuff. And I don't intend to reproduce all that here uh, just to in introduce one new thing. But quick rehash, it's a, a very basic SPI that has a number of different implementations. Uh, namely Postgres and H2 and Microsoft SQL Server. And one of the common questions I've been given when I'm out there talking to uh, the, the community, which is, uh, is there support for MySQL? Uh, MySQL is ubiquitous. I'm not really a huge uh, fan, if I'm honest. I don't really use it if I can avoid it. So I was not heartbroken that it wasn't among the first uh, databases to be supported. But I can see that it is a very popular database. Um, and so. Uh, I wanted to show you how to use it, right? So you can so you can see if this is an opportunity for you to be able to take advantage of this this functionality. Um, and it's kind of interesting. It's coming from a third party project, right? This JustSync project uh, has done a heck of a job uh, supporting uh, MySQL, but they did it in terms of an asynchronous API. It's not a reactive API, right? So if you look at their API, there's completable futures and and these kinds of things, right? Um, but there is now preliminary support here for R2DBC, which I think is uh, super compelling, super interesting. So that builds upon the other stuff that's already there. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and um, uh, just use that along with Spring Data R two BC. We're gonna create a brand new project. But as I've said before, and as remains true, these are not GA bits. These are not things you can uh, go to the start.spring.io Spring Initializer and get uh, a checkbox for. So let's do reactive MySQL with JAW sync and r2dbc okay and all I'm gonna bring in is the reactive web support here just so that I have something to um, to keep the thread open because I'm gonna do a lot of asynchronous stuff that might very well finish after the main method of the Java process uh, decides to end and and then take my JVM program with it okay so hit generate and here we are let's get rid of that try again All right, so there's the uh, zip file. Open this up. All righty, a couple of nice things here. Uh, it's just a regular, simple little, little program. I'm not going to introduce everything all together, but. I want to I want to talk to my sequel so the first thing is I'm, I need a my sequel instance and if I'm honest with you in preparing for this video this was the hardest part for me because I don't have my sequel running on my local machine and it's been uh, you know a long time since I bothered to right I, I'm, I sh I'm sure I I'm sure I've done it a few times in the last couple of years but not on my day-to-day -day experience certainly so I had to dig up this inc incantation to create a docker instance to uh, get it working so uh, basically, I'm creating a named container called orders my SQL DB. I'm binding the container port to the host port. I'm giving it some environment variables, namely the host. I want to bind to everything. I want the root password. I want the regular user, just a regular user called orders, a regular user password called orders, and a database called orders. And I want to use the 5.x series of um, my SQL instances. Uh, that said, my SQL 8 is out, right? It just, it just dropped. Uh, a few weeks ago. I haven't tried this with that because, uh, you know, go with what I know, right? So I figured I'd stay with this. Um, Oracle um, changed incompatibly some things in Oracle uh, MySQL 8.x, including authentication, and uh, I'm sure the change is worthwhile. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I just haven't had the time to dig into it and to see if that works with this and uh, and so on. So being more pragmatic, I figured more people are more than likely dollars to, no dollars to donuts. They're going to be using this. Um, 5.x series at the moment, so we'll use that. And um, I've already got that Docker instance running on my local machine. 
so then you can just execute that and that'll drop you into the container and there you know I can I can talk to the database so orders orders um, h127.0.0.1 oh, come on and minus p okay so if I do this I can show databases and uh, use orders show tables describe orders okay so you can see I've got a single solitary table called orders with an ID and a, f and a, a first name column the ID is a, a long in Java big int and my SQL and SQL and a var car for the name okay just trivial but it's enough to get us a hello world which is all I really care to have so in order to use it of course I need the right dependencies and again there's no spring initializer support here so I'm just gonna add this the old-fashioned way I'm gonna add some code to my build here um, and that will come from here so my little cheat sheet I'll add the dependencies the repositories there we are okay so I'm adding J Center I'm adding spring libs snapshot and spring libs milestone and I'm now going to add the MySQL dependencies uh, for JustSync and the Spring Data support. Okay, so I'm bringing, I'm bringing in Spring Data R2DBC, which is built against a GitHub snapshot. I mean, this is probably super fragile. I wouldn't, I wouldn't depend on this for production code. I wouldn't even depend. I'm not even sure if it'll work next week, right? Let's just say that. But um, it is interesting, and I wanted to share it. So here we are, and uh, j this is the JustSync R2DBC MySQL API. Again, you can use the R2DBC support today. Uh, more readily the spring data stuff is the thing that might might change from here to there but um, this is already pretty solid I built a, a basic client and I'll make sure to check the um, basic R2BC client into the uh, Git repository for the spring tip code here but uh, we're, we're just gonna do it we're gonna use it in terms of spring data and again I already did a video on that so you can watch that one at, at length um, okay so in order for this to work I need some configuration right so class my SQL application configuration extends abstract r2dbc configuration and we're going to return a connection factory and uh, enable r2dbc repositories okay so we need to return a connection factory in the connection factory I've uh, I've cheated here I've got the code laying around right pretty straightforward so you create okay adjusting connection factory using a mysql connection factory uh, and then there's this charmingly PHP like method parse or die right um, uh, which I think is kind of funny um, and we're just connecting using using what looks like a uh, just a regular sort of MySQL connection string so orders order this is the username password host port database name okay um, and that's it that's my connect that's my configuration everything else after that is of course just standard spring data so let's do this interface um, order repository extends reactive crud repository managing entities of type order so I'll create that right now and that'll be tables orders data all args constructor no args constructor long ID string name and ID all right so here's this order long and um, that's it so it's an uh, it's a repository managing instances of order whose type is of type whose primary key is of type long uh, and uh, I'm mapping it to a table called orders even though the entity is called order singular so I, I use the add table annotation from spring data to do that these are of course Lumbach compile time annotations and uh, really once I've done that all I care to do is I'm just gonna create a bean that listens for the data right so I'm gonna application runner I guess run I'm gonna inject the order repository and I'll just say args repository dot find all dot subscribe and um, I'm just gonna inject I'm gonna use a logger here with uh, Lumbach okay all right good stuff all right so there's this very simple example when the application starts up I'm gonna print out everything in the database which will be mapped to objects using reactive uh, SQL MySQL support, okay? Uh, let's see, here we go. What did I do wrong? Oh, this is called FN, right? I saw that, I knew that. 
order is a uh, keyword in SQL. Some databases get upset when you use the, the token name uh, as well, so uh, just to keep things interesting. Um, so there you go. There we are. There's our data on the console. Uh, is there more to be done? Of course, but I think this is super interesting and I wanted to call people's attention to it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Go check out my old video, uh, my, my video from a, like no, no, no more than a few months at most uh, that introduces uh, R2DBC and reactive SQL data access in the Spring ecosystem. Um, that one is done in terms of Postgres, but again, it's nice to see that we have you know heavy hitters like MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server and uh, of course Postgres all well supported now. Um, thanks for that and as always, uh, We'll see you next time.